The website Emulsive.org said it best. You don't buy a camera like this with your head. You buy it because you want to make images that are different to the millions that swamp the internet and other media every day of the week. You buy a camera like this because you relish a challenge. You buy it because you're adventurous and want to make images with impact. You want to experiment, explore, find new directions and have fun. You buy the Fuji GX617 with your heart as a brave photographer. <laughs> I absolutely love that. It couldn't have been said more perfectly. I bought this camera with my heart, not with my head. I'm well aware that I can do a pano with my digital camera side to side and achieve superb results. But for me, photography is always about the experience, the tactile experience in the field. So before I go any further in today's video, I just want to mention something very quickly. Um, in a couple of weeks time, I'm supposed to be in Antarctica with Brendan Van Son and a bunch of other great photographers. We were going to run this floating photography conference on this icebreaker in Antarctica. It was the biggest thing I've ever done and I was so excited, but unfortunately due to COVID, uh, we had to essentially push it all the way back to December 2021, which is you know, well over a year away. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this today, uh, the original trip sold out. Uh, we're very happy with that. Uh, but the, because we've had to push it back to 2021, we've actually had to get a different ship, a bigger ship. It's better, it has a higher ice rating, and also a swimming pool and various other things on board. And this bigger ship obviously has a few more spaces. So if you were interested or are interested in coming on this sort of epic landscape photography conference where basically me and Brendan and this other group of great photographers have the run of the entire ship and can dictate everything on board and the schedule and all that kind of stuff. Um, I will put the information below. I just wanted to mention that uh, because it's been a bit of a headache and a bit of a juggle, you know, because of COVID trying to shuffle everything around. Um, anyway, we've finally got everything organized and it's now happening in December 2021. So you will have seen my last video where I went hiking with this camera and it was just awful. I mean, I had a few comments saying, oh, you know, that, that, you're exaggerating and everything like that. Uh, clickbait was one of, the, uh, one of the comments that I received. But the, my point with that video was um, it's not, you know, it's not about how the images turned out at the end. It's about how I felt on the day in the moment. And I was so low. I, I just felt like a complete like idiot, you know, like a, like a failed photography. I made every mistake under the sun with this camera. And I was just like, why am I making this video? Why am I out? Why did I buy this camera? Why don't I just stick to my Canon 5D Mark IV? That's how I felt. I felt really low, which is why I titled the video the, my worst day in the field as a landscape photographer. Because for me, that, that was the worst day I've ever had. I've never been out of my camera and felt that low. Um, but yeah, the images turned out all right in the end. But anyway, this video, what I want to do is look at other shoots I have done with this camera because that wasn't my first shoot. I've been out practicing with this camera and I've had some success. And whilst I did try and film a video in the field with this camera when I first purchased it, I was so busy concentrating on this camera, learning how to use it, making sure I wasn't making any mistakes, um, that the photography turned out really well, but the video was just terrible and didn't make any sense. So it wasn't a complete video. And I'll, I'll talk you through what happened. I went to a beautiful location on the Northumberland coast close to me. It's a fantastic estuary where at low tide, the water drains out of the estuary and leaves beautiful shapes in the sand, which leave you, lead you over to a beautiful castle called Lindisfarne. So I went there to shoot a, uh, my first pano with this camera. I went there two days in a row. The first day I felt was not a success, but actually the images from the first day or the image from the first day was the best. So we'll start off with that first day with this camera on the Northumberland coast. So the sun's starting to go down now and I've got some Provia 100, which I'm gonna put in the camera. That's four images that I'm gonna shoot on this scene as the tide retreats and uh, reveals all of this estuary. It's, it's fairly interesting. I mean, to be honest, the light is as flat as a pancake. It's really hazy. 
and I'm not expecting any amazing images from this trip. I am, however, hoping to learn a thing or two about this camera. So I'll get this film loaded and we'll fire off four exposures and see what we get. Okay, eight seconds at f32, it's really windy, so I don't have high hopes for this image, but if the wind calms down and we get the shot, it potentially could look quite nice. So let's go. Wind's not too strong, eight seconds. <sighs> Maybe I'll just shield the camera. All right, eight seconds. There we go. Hopefully, <laughs> that image works out. So that was my first image with this camera and uh, well, I think it was a, a fantastic success. I really, really like this image. So I'm looking at it over on my computer screen here. I think this is a fantastic image. Now, I'm, I'm noticing a theme with uh, this camera and with my film photography in general. And the theme is that on location, I do have a lot of doubt. And then after the fact, when I get the images, I'm actually quite pleased. And that's exactly what happened here. I said on location that the light was flat as a pancake. And in fact, it was as flat as a pancake. But the film, Provia 100, extracts every ounce of colour from that scene. And we get that here in the image. It's beautiful pastel colours. And uh, for me, this is my type of image. Now, what I didn't notice at the time, or what I didn't visualize at the time, was the long exposure and how that would impact on the movement of the water. And what really attracts me to this image is the swirling motion of the water as the low tide, as the, as the tide rushes out through the estuary. And you can see that pattern in the foreground of the image. Um, really helps draw the eye through the scene. So this was a great success, and that was my first ever shoot with this camera. And it's just a shame that I didn't do a better job making the video. Um, but as I mentioned before, on location, I always have doubt. So I decided that in fact, the light was rubbish. So I was gonna return the next day and go again and hopefully do a better job making the video, right? Because I was aware that the video wasn't very good. I was too busy concentrating on this. So I went back to the same location the next day and it was a funny one because we had phenomenal light. I mean, the light was just explosive. It was beautiful, but it didn't quite work with this camera. And you'll see why when you see the images. And then we look at the video and you think, okay, well, why didn't I do a standalone video? You know, I was all ready to make this fantastic video talking about the camera and the photography, but you'll see from the clip that unfortunately, I wasn't alone. And if you watch this channel, you'll know that I, crumple like a wet paper bag as soon as anybody comes within the vicinity of me when I'm trying to film. I cannot talk to a camera if anybody else is around or anybody that I don't know. Um, I just can't do it. I, I cannot. I freeze up. I lock up. So again, the video was a massive fail, but we do have a couple of images. So enjoy the video and we'll talk about the final photographs.
So you can see from that that the light was perfect. The light was just fantastic, man. But the tides, the tides weren't right. The previous day we had the right tide as it was dropping at sunset, so we get the S-curve, but we didn't have the light. And on this occasion, the next day we had the light, but the tides were like an hour and a half later. So we didn't get that low tide and that's what I wanted. Now this image, the first one I took, is, I mean, it's super minimalist, don't get me wrong. Very, very minimalist, which I love, of course. I wouldn't, I just would have minded, you know, I would have liked a bit more detail in the foreground. Um, and it has, it does have a very, very clean look and it is all about the light. And I guess it's okay, it's quite cool. It's, it's a quiet image and maybe it's one that you could live with over time. I don't know, I'd love to know your thoughts actually on this, in fact, on all of the images. Um, but on this one, I'm so unsure about this one. It's almost a photograph of nothing, but it also has so much to it. You know, the texture and the sheen of the water, the light and the quietness of it. So that was the first image. The second image, which was probably taken 15 minutes later, is, let me just bring it up here. The second image, the light is even more vibrant. You can see the tide is beginning to retreat, which gives me that bit of foreground interest that I think the last image was lacking, but things have changed in those 15 minutes. And you can see this image is not balanced. Uh, there's no symmetry to it. You can see that the light, that band of light, has shifted to the left, whereas on the previous image it kind of arced over the whole scene. So the sun is setting and moving left out of the frame and it's bringing the light with it. So now we have light on one side, but not the other, which wouldn't have been too bad if we'd have had something to balance the other side. But as you can see, as the tide's retreating, we do have detail in the foreground, but most of the detail, again, is left of frame. Um, so the right of the frame is dark and lacking that detail. And we can't crop it because then the castle of Lindisfarne, which is the only real feature in the whole image, would be off center. And that's a big no-no. So those three images were the first few images that I took with this camera. And technically, they were a great success. The videos were complete shambles, which is why I'm making this here today. But the photo shoot and the images, I'm very happy with, you know, I, I nailed it. You know, I don't mind saying so, but I absolutely smashed it. Um, but in terms of exposure and focus and sharpness, you know, it's absolutely spot on, which is why I was so disappointed in my last video when I went hiking with this camera and messed up every single step. Um, so there you go. I just thought I wanted to make a, a, a follow-up video showing that this camera can in fact be used successfully and by me. Now I'm not done with this camera, it's gonna make many appearances on my channel. Um, I, I absolutely love it and just as Emulsive, the uh, online magazine I think it is, just like Emulsive said, you know, you buy it with your heart as a brave photographer. <laughs> you know, there is no rational explanation for owning this camera. But unless you shoot something like this and that tactile, tactile feel of an old analog camera and shooting film where you never really know what you're gonna get. It's an experience, it truly is. And it's one I would recommend every photographer try. If you've got some old film cameras, even 35 mil up in the attic, or maybe your grandparents or your parents have them or an uncle and they're just not using them, buy a, you know, buy a roll of film, cheap as chips, stick it in and give it a go because uh, you might be surprised. It is a lot of fun. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna leave it there. It's just a quick Sunday video. Um, so yeah, just let me know your comments. Let me know your thoughts on the images below. And if you are interested in the Antarctica trip, um, I'll link to that in the description below as well. So thank you guys for watching and until next time, bye for now.